Some adventures begin easily. It's not hard, after all, to be sucked up by a tornado or pushed through a particularly porous mirror. There is no skill involved in being swept away by a great wave or pulled down through a rabbit hole. Some adventures require nothing more than a willing heart and the ability to trip over the cracks in the world. Other adventures must be committed to before they have even properly begun. How else would they know the worthy from the unworthy? Some adventures are cruel because it is the only way they know to be kind. It's AJ and today I will be talking about Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Sonnen McGuire. This is the second book in the Wayward Children series and just like the first one, I absolutely loved this book. The first book introduces characters who have gone to worlds that are all vastly different. And so now in the second book we get our first taste of one of these worlds, the Moors. This is the one the twins Jack and Jill from the first book ended up in. The story takes us through their entire life up until the moment they return. The writing style really spoke to me, just like the two other books that I've read written by Maguire. It had this omniscient narrator which did a lot of forebading and that really added to the eeriness of the story. The Moors themselves are incredibly gloomy and sinister and they really give off this Dracula slash Frankenstein vibe. It is important to understand the world in which Jacqueline and Gillian found themselves marooned, even if they would not understand it fully for some time, if ever. And so the Moors. There are worlds built on rainbows and worlds built on rain. There are worlds of pure mathematics, where every number chimes like crystal as it rolls into reality. There are worlds of light and worlds of darkness, worlds of rhyme and worlds of reason, and worlds where the only thing that matters is the goodness in a hero's heart. The Moors are none of those things. The Moors exist in eternal twilight, in the pause between the lightning strike and the resurrection. They are a place of endless scientific experimentation, of monstrous beauty and of terrible consequences. I also love how this book emphasises on how important it is to let people, specifically children, be who they want to be. The emphasis even more so on the consequences of not doing so. In the first part of the book you get to know Jack and Jill's parents and how truly terrible they were. Their reason for having children had always been solely to parade them in front of their colleagues and friends as trophies. And so you have these really overbearing parents who actually only care about how their children look rather than who they really are. Not knowing who to trust and at who to target their resentment. The only positive influence they had was their grandmother. This results in Jack and Jill growing further and further apart from one another, feeling frustrated by constantly being put in tiny boxes. She had tried to make sure they knew that there were a hundred, a thousand, a million different ways to be a girl, and that all of them were valid, and that neither of them was doing anything wrong. She had tried. But their parents cut her out of their lives before she could have a profound impact on them. Either way, this situation leads them to a door that grants passage to the Moors. And the part that followed was my favourite. The girls discover the world of the Moors, and the inhabitants. This is the first time they get to choose who they want to be, but that is not to say that there aren't any consequences to their choices. What I really liked about this part was how you had all these little bits and pieces of information that you would get about the moors, like the moon, or about the people who had found doors to the moors before Jack and Jill. The entire storyline was really interesting and made for a very quick read. A lot of things were going on, from very endearing scenes to absolutely horrendous passages, and the pacing was just amazing. I would say that I liked Jack more than Jill, but I think that if you've read Every Heart a Doorway, that would not surprise you. It was so awesome to see how Jack and Jill became the people that we met in the first book, and this story just explains so much their behaviour makes so much more sense, especially Jules, and it really made me want to reread the first one. Either way, that's everything I had to say with regards to Down Among the Sticks and Bones. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so feel free to leave them in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.